Hey guys, Bobby here, and if you're looking for the quickest and most efficient way to edit a wedding ceremony film, then this video is for you. In fact, in the time it takes you to watch this video, you could already be well on your way to finishing a regular length wedding ceremony edit. All right, so here we are in our editor going over how to edit a ceremony quickly. Now, I have all my footage uh, and audio imported here into my uh, project already. Now, when I import, you'll see here, um, I import based off of how I sort in my uh, finder on my hard drive, and I do that with folders. So I grabbed all these folders right here, and that's what I imported, and that's actually important for this next step because of the organizational side of things being so important. Um, and I've got a video, a complete series coming out on editing, so this will be a little bit repeated there and this is not my project file for um, this actual wedding this is just for this video so if anything looks weird that would be why um, but the reason being is that when I uh, import the folders it creates these keyword folders in here based off of them and that lets me easily go in and find all of the clips that are part of the ceremony so this is kind of our, our backup camera for ceremony. So most of these, yeah, if not all, are part of the ceremony. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each folder here, each camera, and the audio as well. And I'm going to select all of the clips that are part of the ceremony. So in this camera, it was all of them. I'm going to go over to the inspector. I'm going to make sure extended is what is selected here. And that's going to show you... Uh, these fields that you can input and I'm going to go ahead and just fill out the scene for now and I'm going to call it ceremony with a capital C hit enter and now all of these are labeled as the scene ceremony I'm going to go in and do that for my next camera looks like it starts here and it's just these two clips scene ceremony go into my third camera all right, so that starts here and goes to there. Call that ceremony. And the last video or last camera for this. All right, now I'm also going to go into the audio that I want to use. And I'm going to find which one that is. And I'm going to name it ceremony as well. All right, now I had a pastor lab and a groom lab as well, but I believe everything was picked up for uh, through the DR40 through my main feed. Um, if that's not the case, I would do the same, you know, with these lab mics, but it's not going to make a difference for this. Um, so then, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to hit File New and make a new Smart Collection. We're just going to call it Ceremony, and if you double click on it. You can set rules for basically what goes into this folder. So all we're going to do is go to Format Info, say that the scene is Ceremony with a capital C, hit Enter, and now it's all going to pop up in here. It's also all going to be in your main project file. You see the Ceremony ta uh, tag up here. If you were to label other things as well, like bridal prep, whatever, things I get into in my full editing series coming out, it would all be divided. So this is all no data, 355 clips and audio files because you know we haven't assigned anything to it. But this whole field or this whole like page, if you scroll down, would be divided up in alphabetical, in alphabetical order by the uh, scene that you set. Now, we're gonna go back into our smart folder or you can do it from the main project and we're going to divide up the cameras and this is important because when you sync this multi-cam edit you need to tell it what is the same camera so it puts it all on the same track basically um, and I know this is a little bit of setup um, all of this I'm gonna get this whole thing sorted you guys are gonna see it in a couple minutes it's gonna take me 10 minutes maybe I'm gonna speed through some things so you know it's really not that much setup to give you kind of the easiest way to make that edit it's very well worth doing this initial organization so I'm gonna go through and you know all these are in order basically so I'm just looking at the camera name or the clip names here and that one goes to there 
So I'm gonna name this, you're gonna go, so we already did the scene, which is ceremony, and then we're gonna name the camera angle, and that's what's important. I'll just call this camera angle one for those seven or eight clips or whatever it was. Then this is the next camera. We'll call that camera angle two. Um, this is my gimbal camera, so I want that to be camera angle four. And I think I might have missed a clip in there, but that's fine. Um, and then this one will be camera angle three. And then you also need to label the audio track as a camera angle, or I like to, especially if I have multiple, uh, multiple audio files. So we're just gonna call this camera angle five. Then you're gonna go in, you're gonna select everything that you just set a camera angle to, control click, right click, whatever, and hit new multicam clip. We'll call this ceremony. Hit OK, and it's going to go ahead and sync everything up. All right, so once it syncs everything up, you're gonna see this new clip that it created, and it's gonna have this little box here. That means it's a multicam clip. If you double click on it, it'll bring you into the multicam clip, and you can see here that this is why we set our different tracks. So it set all of this camera on one track, all of this camera on one, this on one, and this on one, and then our audio track here at the bottom. Now, what I do like to do, I'm gonna turn my audio on, but I'll turn it quiet so it doesn't get overwhelming, is I do like to go in and make sure that everything is actually lined up. It does a good job on most things, especially big clips, but I do occasionally see it slip a little bit, like be a few frames off. And with smaller clips that it doesn't have as much to hold on to, or if your camera audio is really low, uh, it, it does sometimes, uh, you know, kind of fumble around with that. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn off the audio on this track, and I'm going to turn on this audio, and I'm going to make it nice and loud, just because it was a little quiet, it looks like, coming in. Um, and then this right here, when you have that selected, that is your monitoring angle. If you want to see one as you play through it, you need to make that your monitoring angle. This is my audio and then I'm gonna go ahead and play through, and I like to usually find where they're talking because that's the most important. Above all else, yourselves with love, which binds us together. That one's good. Open up the box. That one's good. We'll go down to here. Becoming one in Christ. I like to use the word meal. Those are good. Go down to this one. Those are good, and this one's a gimbal camera. Now, if I was actually doing this edit right now, I probably would go in and just check some of these, but they all look good. There are a few short ones here, which I always worry about. But the other thing too is if they're that short, you might not even be using them anyway. So usually I'll go into the edit, start doing the cuts, and then if I do really need to use a clip and I notice that it's off, I'll come back in here. All right guys, so real quick I mentioned that my uh, gimbal camera was missing a clip that I forgot to import. I think it's important to show you how to do that. So we're here in that multi-cam edit. You can just double click on the you know clip that it goes out or the clip that's in your timeline to get here. And I'm gonna go ahead and find the uh, clip. So you can see here actually the thumbnail was of my backpack so I thought it was just something that I accidentally recorded, which is actually the case, but the front of this clip um, is them leaving the ceremony, which is what I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead into here. I want to make sure I have the, um, the correct track. So this is this camera right here, this gimbal camera. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just drag it down. It doesn't matter where you drag it. Now, usually what I would do is I would make my audio the monitoring angle, and then I would just make sure this clip is selected. I click on this arrow and I hit sync selection to monitoring angle. However, in this scenario, you can see that that's actually not working. And when it doesn't work, it's usually because there's not enough audio to line up or it's having issues wondering where something goes. And in this specific scenario, it's probably because I have so much footage of it sitting there 
and there's nothing really that syncs up to that and so it gets confused. So I might try just going ahead and cutting everything from like here on and then retrying so it really only has this stuff to sync up to which would be in the audio track. But another trick you can do is you can go ahead and just change the monitoring angle. You know that all these cameras up here are already synced to this audio and so if I make this angle the monitoring angle and then I just keep this selected just like before hit that drop down and sync selection to monitoring angle I can see if that one will sync up correctly and now you can see that it just went ahead and moved it to the end where it belongs and I can go in here at the very beginning I'll make that my monitoring angle I'll make this my audio and I can just check if it lines up and that is I'm sure lined up I know there's no dialogue but it does a pretty good job as always and that's how you add a clip so next step you're gonna do is make the actual timeline for your ceremony so I'm gonna do a new project call it ceremony you know use whatever settings you want and then I'm gonna come down here I'm just gonna put it here now I don't like using my magnetic timeline you guys can get all over my case about that I use it in some scenarios but I'm just used to Final Cut 7 and the magnetic things sometimes it throws me for a loop um, so this is how I'm gonna do it uh, if you are using multiple audio tracks quick little tip here once you put it in before you cut anything I like to double click go into my audio tracks I would select them all if there are multiple hit command C to copy go back into my timeline and hit command V to paste all these clips here um, and that just makes it easier for me to visualize things to fade in different mics and stuff like that so you know you'd have multiple this being only one audio track doesn't really matter but I'll just do it that way so you can see um, so I would turn this one off and I would just use this then I'm gonna also go in and just see which uh, camera shows up first so this is track two that shows up first so at the very beginning I'm gonna go to the very beginning and then we're gonna hit view angles and this is what's going to allow us to do a multi-cam edit here you want to make sure that you're just cutting the uh the visuals here the film uh you know the the video not the video and audio not just the audio so we're just cutting that we're going to put it to cam 2 because that is the earliest camera that turns on and just go when that starts let's see when stuff actually starts happening here people are still sitting okay so like around there let's just say and we're gonna cut this and cut this actually we'll cut this and make it a little easier and delete that whole thing all right nope did not want to delete that all right there we go so this is all lined up and then all you're gonna do I'm gonna turn the volume down here is you're gonna hit play and you are basically live cutting um, between these angles if you have more angles they'll be on this next page you can see my audio track there um, but we only usually run three or four cameras so if I want to make a cut I'm just gonna click as soon as they get out of frame and it will makes that cut oops in my timeline as you can see it made it right there he goes out of focus there so I'll go back to this camera I'm gonna fit this just so I can see everything and I'm gonna work my way through the entire ceremony. Um, one thing I have noticed is if you know your cameras are pretty locked down, one thing I like to do is you can scrub through it. Um, you know, I never go more than maybe a minute scrub at a time, um, but you can kind of see, you know, hey, this camera stays steady, it is rolling the whole time, et cetera, et cetera. And then right here, I wanna to cut to this camera. I'll keep playing and then when he drops them off he kind of goes out of focus around there i want to cut to the next camera and this you know scrubbing makes a little more sense um you know once everybody's already up front and ready to go all right so you can see we've been making cuts the entire way through i've been uh scrubbing to see you know where i want to cut and then you know maybe going a minute a minute and a half finding a good spot cutting going through cutting etc etc we're all the way towards the end now they just had their first kiss we're gonna do a couple things just to wrap this up you can see here it gets pretty loud so I'm gonna go ahead and just keyframe 
because I had this like maxed out basically. So that's probably some music or something. So we'll keep it there and I'll check it when this uh, recording obviously is done. So we're gonna make a few cuts here at the very end. They're all excited and they're about to walk down the aisle. And I believe, yeah, so there's where my camera pops up. So we are gonna be off until there pretty much, until I got my gimbal up in place. So we'll, again, we'll just scrub through as it goes quicker. Looks like about there. Go back a few frames. Oh, I'm uh, moving this first camera at the same time. So we'll cut over here. This is why I actually like to have a, a wide safety camera. It would have been a better cut. Um, but that's okay. We'll go back to them here. Scrub through. Let's see, they went to there. It looks like I just ran the gimbal probably as the entire recessional camera. Now I can, of course, cut to these as people come together and I'm moving around here. But it was a very long aisle, so once they work their way back down, uh, actually we can just use this. It looks like I put this one down and that's the epic backpack shot. Uh, I'm gonna go back to this camera. So I'm finding my focus, but that's all right. And we'll just scrub this until the whole wedding party is down. Looks like I have the parents, so I'll include that as well. And we'll cut it right there. Cut all this off. Cut all this off. Finishing touches. Just dissolve there. Fade out here. Get rid of this. And make sure we add a fade in at the very beginning and fade in the audio. And we are good to go. So that's pretty much it guys. We've worked our way through this, uh, doing the cuts live as we go. This is a 30 minute ceremony and it probably took me about 30 minutes to edit, maybe less honestly. Again, that organization up front, it is a little bit of a pain because uh, you want to get right into that edit, but it saves you so much time in the edit being able to do a multi-cam cut live as you go and just scrubbing through finding you know a couple minutes on this angle a couple minutes on this angle just making sure it's not blocked etc and i'm all about saving time so this is the best way that i've found to do it uh, as far as a ceremony edit goes again i've got an entire series coming out on how to do a wedding film edit that's going to focus on the highlight film but go into some of these details as well it's going to start all the way from the beginning on organizing footage on your hard drive all the way through to the end of delivery so keep an eye out for that and i'll see you guys in my next video